Hey, I'm Samuel G, and you're not, thank goodness, but the fact you're there and I'm here is a good thing. Let's get rolling again with another version of Shooting It With Samuel G. We're going to stay right where we've always stayed, right on top of a hot topic up in Eaton, Colorado. Jim Danley, the longtime Hall of Fame baseball coach, going head-to-head -head with a school board for some reason doesn't like some of the way Jim has done things. Well, I just don't see a feasible solution to this whole problem. The longer they take to come up with an answer, the longer we can all speculate that this is not going to work in the long run. I'm really interested now to see how this nighttime soap opera really turns out and see if they can move forward in a positive way. I'll be real surprised if it can. Let's stay at home right here. My colleague Kayla Cornett is doing a feature that will appear in the uh, Tribune on Saturday morning on a university runner, Eden, Eden Brownlee, who was hit by a car and is now back running. Amazing story. Uh, be sure to read it. It'll be a good read. One of those feel-good uh, Saturday uh, stories for you. Take a look at it. She also has reminded me that the University High girls volleyball team, mm -hmm, undefeated. Well, now they're in the same category as the Eaton girls trying to three-peat. That's three. One, two, three. Three-peat on state championships. Those two meet Tuesday night at University High. Could be a heck of a showdown. One thing for sure, it's going to be a great atmosphere when these two Patriot League teams go head-to-head. -head. Now, let's also uh, promo a little bit that's coming up in uh, Sunday's Tribune where we've kind of wandered around some parking lots, I guess, of some high school games. No, we're not looking for somebody's car that's unlocked. We're looking for people who know how to flip a burger, turn a hot dog, have a good time before watching the high, uh, high school football game. This little series is going to be called Red Zone Routines. I'm really interested to see what this is and where people really know how to take on a Friday night and those who just show up to see what the score is, but instead venture to the parking lot, make it a social affair. I think that's what we need to focus on, making these high school sports a fun again. Well, let's go up the hill to our friends at the University of Northern Colorado the football team. Man, you know, it, it's really hard for me to say this, but I really think with a program that has struggled for the last four or five years, uh, got beat last week on the road 30-3 to at Southern Utah uh, in a game where it shouldn't have been that way. Every win is a must win for this bunch, and that includes tomorrow's contest against Weber State at Nottingham Field. Every win is a must win if people are going to be convinced that this program's headed in the right direction. That's tough to realize and say, but it's a fact, folks. The Bears need a win. They need to turn the corner. They need to get back on a situation where wins are not something that you struggle to get. They become automatic. Let's switch to volleyball. You know, it kind of pains me to also say they're dealing with maybe some growing pains. Uh, it's a Lindsey Oates coach team. You know they're going to get better as the season goes on. But a four-set loss last night at Idaho in a match where I really felt like they could start the Big Sky Conference off with a, with a victory didn't happen. And you can see the growing pains on this team with some sophomores really filling in on the front line as middle blockers and, of course, sliding to the outside as outside hitters. It's going to take a while for this team to gel, and just hopefully in the next month they will be picking up uh, victories in a regular fashion and be in the hunt for the Big Sky Conference title. Okay, now let's talk a little bit, maybe a little bit, about the NFL. I'm going to wait till Halloween, maybe Thanksgiving, to figure out which teams are good and which teams aren't because there's some 0-2 teams right now that definitely are better than that, and there's some 2-0 teams that aren't that bad. So let's wait until you know the goblins come out at Halloween and then we all sit around and stuff and feed our pie holes at Thanksgiving to figure out which teams really are good this year. I think it's going to take that long for everybody to realize how things are working, and of course, in that time, whoever is avoiding injuries, you know is going to be at the top. So I think we should reserve some time for that. Now let's go to my buddy. Only, you know, theoretically, but everybody's buddy, Yogi Berra. Finally, it is over. At 90 years old, little Yogi finally went to the big ball ballpark in the sky. We're wearing this Yankee hat tonight in honor of Yogi, a guy that nobody has said a bad word about. And, of course, Yogi had a lot of words to say, some which didn't make sense, but when you thought about it, they did make sense. Really, really just an icon uh, if you start thinking about it. Arguably, but maybe the best Yankee ever, and that is saying a lot. This guy put up some numbers as a catcher that catchers and players nowadays can't even imagine doing what he did. Why? Because they're lazy and they make more money and they don't have to put in the time and the effort and the commitment that Yogi did. A guy that came from nowhere. And we know all of his sayings, you know, it ain't over till it's over. You know, and when you come to the fork in the road, take it. I was reminded one last night 
you know, of, of when the Yankees used to wear wool uniforms and a reporter asked him, how do you guys stay cool? You know, cool off in those wool uniforms. And Yogi looked at the woman reporter and said, you ain't so hot yourself, lady. Well, that's Yogi. And with the Pope being in our country this week, uh, they brought up a fact that Yogi did meet uh, John Paul II, a uh, past Pope. And you know what? Yeah, the Pope is an iconic figure, and we all worship him. I think everybody with any kind of religion or spirituality understands what his status is. But when Yogi met the Pope, he made it like a neighbor. He said, hello, Pope. What do you say to a Pope? That's exactly what you say. Hello, Pope. Well, let's just think about next week. A lot can go on this week. Think about Yogi Bear and where he's at right now, sitting at the, in the best seats in the house. Hopefully he's come and found some of my friends, Vic Nottingham, uh, of course, uh, Buck Rollins, you know, and Doro Miller. And hopefully they're all three sitting together watching the game because those three guys would really get along because they were real. Yogi was real. Let's keep it real and show up here next week. I can't wait to see you then.